with your Wednesday, August 26th evening newscast. I am Josh Van Sleikman. A pleasant good evening to you and thank you for joining us. Let's get to the news in detail. Today, President Irfan Ali conveyed a virtual emergency multi-stakeholder meeting to discuss urgent issues related to strengthening and advancing the national COVID-19 response. The meeting was held at State House. The meeting discussed the need to ensure that there is a balance between the health of the economy and the health and well-being of the citizens. It also examined how to enhance the capacity at the retrofitted infectious disease hospital at Liliandal to function as an isolation facility as well as the reopening of the Cheney Jagger International Airport for commercial travel. President Ali noted that while such a step is integral to the stabilizing and re-energizing of the economy, a decision will not be taken without considering the safest and most practical model moving forward. Vice President Dr. Barrett Jagger, who also attended the meeting, emphasized the importance of the comprehensive analysis of the situation to the creation of sound policies to guide the national COVID-19 response. Meanwhile, Minister of Health Dr. Frank Antony outlined Guyana's current status regarding the testing and positive cases. The minister also reiterated the importance of finding the right balance moving forward. Additionally, PAHU WHO Country Representative Dr. William Adokro noted that the key role of effective monitoring system in dealing with this pandemic, even as he emphasized the importance of testing, enforcement, and education. Private sector representatives and members of the media also attended the meeting. These stakeholders were also given the opportunity to offer their suggestions and input on key aspects to be included in a coordinated plan moving forward. These suggestions centered around strengthening the enforcement of safety measures and protocols, enhancing the training of health personnel, access to personal protective equipment, the importance of the strengthened interagency communications amongst all stakeholders, and the adoption of the best strategy moving forward. Following the discussion, the President pledged to continue engaging all stakeholders as his government moves forward in formalizing a concrete strategy to take the country forward. He also assured that all the concerns raised in the discussion will be examined. The President also informed the meeting that the subcommittees will be established to tackle pre pressing COVID-19 related issues head on. We tell you now that ExxonMobil says it trained 24 technicians for Guyana operation but continues to dodge key questions on local content. The Starbuck block operator ExxonMobil announced yesterday that it has trained 24 Guyanese who will be working on the Liza Destiny vessel from next month as maintenance technicians. The multinational oil giant noted that this is the first group of Guyanese who will have undergone an extensive 18-month training program that is organized in Canada. ExxonMobil said that the technicians will work under the supervision of the Liza Destiny's operator, SBM Offshore, so as to produce Guyana's oil and gas. It was, it was also noted that these trained Guyanese will replace experienced international workers over the coming years. Even as it sought to present the foregoing picture regarding its effort to train locals, the company continues to dodge critical questions that will expose just how genuine is the interest in building local content in Guyana. For more than four years, Exxon has failed to provide data on how many Guyanese it has trained for senior positions between 2015 to 2019, as well as the salary scales for each job title. The company has also failed to show how it has invested in institutions that will build capacity for Guyanese, not just in the oil sector, but for those sectors which the nation envisions will help to steer its clear of that should be stored. Sorry, I'll go that again. To steer it clear of the damaging effects of oil dependency. We tell you now that a number of persons were yesterday fined or given community service by Magistrate Crystal Lambert for breaching the COVID 19 regulations. These defendants make a virtual appearance before Magistrate Lambert in the Bartica Magistrate's Court. Ricky Benny, David Williams, Anthony Henry, Travis James, and Harry Tularam all pleaded guilty to the charge which stated that they breached COVID-19 emergency measures. The men were fined 10000 each for the offense. Meanwhile, Montana Nurse and Leonard Shuri pleaded guilty to the charge which stated that they too breached COVID-19 measures. 
They were, however, given 90 hours of community service. A police report revealed, too, that Simone Lindor and Tex Kensville, who were also charged for breaching the COVID-19 measures, failed to make court appearance, so that these matters have been adjourned to September 14, 2020. Magistrate Lambert also dismissed charges against Lorraine Magor and Alicia Magor. A member of the Garden Defense Force was on Tuesday night shot in a suspected execution attempt at First Street Kurukuru Suzlike Linden Highway. The GDF rank has been identified as Lance Corporal Tadil Man Mathan, 30, of 468th Kurukuru Suzlike Linden Highway. According to reports, around 20 hours, the GDF rank was at the street corner chatting with some friends when he received a phone call. Kaitra was informed that the soldier went over to the other side of the road and was talking on his phone when two men clad in hoodies approached him. One of the men, who was armed with a handgun, reportedly fired a single shot hitting the soldier to the right side chest. It was revealed that while the men escaped, the soldier ran from the scene but collapsed some distance away. He was rushed to the medical unit at the GDF to Mary's base but was later transferred to the Georgetown Public Hospital Corporation. According to a source, the bullet missed the soldier vital arteries and organs and he has since been discharged from hospital. The matter was reported and an investigation was launched. No arrest has been made as yet. Stay with us. Coming up after the break is your COVID-19 updates.